What is up, heroes? This is Minade Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, Dio... Well, Dio did Dio things, right? <laughs> Dio took the Excelvior and held it hostage so that we would choose ally in this AB game, where we're paired up with Clover. However, in the heat of the moment, after, well, having thought about it briefly, I ended up choosing Betray. Sigma was so dead set on picking ally because it's who he is, it's his character to not be able to harm Quark, right? Um, even if it costs him his own life, right? And on the other hand, me as the player controlling Sigma, I I couldn't do that. And so I chose Betray. And well, let's see what the repercussions are. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Clover and I walked slowly out of the AB room. Dio glanced over at us as he exited his own room. I looked away before he could make eye contact. Sigma... Sigma... Why? After all that stuff you said- Oh man, this music makes me think we totally picked a wrong end. <laughs> We're totally gonna get a game over here. I mean, it's not like I'm criticizing you. I think you made the right decision. Sorry. You don't need to apologize. I think I would have chosen Betray if I was in your position. We'll find another way, alright? We just have to keep an eye on Dio. As soon as he gives us an opening, we take it. And I'm sure Alice will help us too. Now that I think about it, you know what would have been pretty helpful? Once Dio was already in the AB room, they could have talked to the rest of the crew about everything going on, and could have had something prepared so that as soon as the AB game room ended, well, they could try to apprehend Dio and steal back the Excelvior. Because the AB rooms are soundproofed, right? So once Dio was already in one, well, there's nothing preventing him from, well, preventing us from talking about it, right? Did you tell her? It's okay. We can trust Alice. There's no way she told him. Anyway, let's go check the results. Yeah. Oh boy. How did things pan out? So, okay, Alice and Temyoji. Wow. So, so big stuff going on here. Kay and Alice chose to betray Tenmyoji. Which is shocking because Kay said he was going to pick Ally. Alice said that she was going to pick Ally because now Kay has nine points and is able to leave. Which we know in a previous timeline that doesn't turn out very well for the rest of the crew. Yikes. And then Luna and Phi choose to Ally. Which is, which is good. Um, I'm surprised Phi didn't push a little bit more for Betray, but but in the end, Ally, I can appreciate. And then we chose to Betray, as did Dio. Wow, Dio really would have chosen Betray knowing we had Ally, so that he could have the nine points. Alright, results displayed, bracelets updated. And the aftermath. Hey! What the heck is this? Sorry, I decided to choose Betray. Oh, so you don't care what happens to Quark? What kind of a cold-hearted Baka are you? Jeez. Please. Just give it back. Hey, Sigma, what are you talking about? We found the Excelivir. In the laboratory. And Dio stole it. 
What? You mean he has it? Right now? Nah, I don't have it. What? Well, I won't have it in about two seconds. The moment the words left his mouth, I knew what he planned to do. No! Don't! I leapt toward him as I spoke, but it was already too late. Dio snatched the vial out of his pocket, brought it up, and threw it to the ground. No. You baka! What are you doing? A promise is a promise. If you chose an ally, this never would have happened. You want to blame someone? Blame yourselves. Ugh. I'd had enough. Something snapped in my brain. Sigma's gonna go ham. I let out a guttural roar and leapt forward. Only to be stopped short by a firm hand on my arm. It was fine. Hold it! Why are you stopping me? Because this isn't the time for that. Huh? What do you mean this isn't the time for... And then K is opening the door. <laughs> Look at the number 9 door. K. K was indeed standing in front of the door. What... What is he... No! 9. His BP is 9. What? Yeah, and the question is, where's Alice? Suddenly, we were all running toward K and the number 9 door. Aw, oh, man. And that seals in the game over for us. That seals it in. K! What the heck do you think you're doing? And there's the game over music, too. What am I doing? Well, that should be obvious, but if you insist, I am attempting to leave. Are you kidding me? I assure you I would do no such thing. I am perfectly serious. After a rational assessment of the facts, I have concluded that this is the wisest course of action. What is currently our highest priority? The answer is, of course, to save Quark. He must be taken to a hospital as soon as possible. <clears throat> for that to happen, one of us must escape and call for help. Currently, the only one of us capable of doing so is myself. That is why I intend to escape. And leave us all behind? Unavoidable, but as I said, I do intend to call for help. Could you have at least waited until the next round? Then you could have raised Quark's BP to 9 and taken him with you. And what would happen if Dio was Quark's opponent in the next round? I have no illusions about what Dio would do. This is the most logical choice. The number 9 door has been opened. It will remain open for 9 seconds. Wait! Where's Alice? Ah yes, Alice is in the AB room. 
She has collapsed, but you needn't be concerned. She is only sleeping. Oh no! What did you do to Alice? You will need to ask her yourself. I must take my leave. Hey! Darn it! Wait! Dio charged at Kay. But the larger man easily sidestepped him and tumbled nimbly through the door just before it closed. And there you have it, and there's this bad end. <laughs> the number 9 door is closed, this ends the Nonary game, thank you for your participation, as the game is over, all doors are unlocked, escape is not possible, please enjoy your stay. Yikes, and that was it. Kay did take advantage of Alice, we got a game over. I really do believe in that decision I made though. Choosing to betray in that situation prevent Dio from doing so, trusting more in Kay to... To actually not, I don't know, take advantage of Alice and instead uh, to prevent Dio from doing that. I think that's a much more reasonable approach than, well, trying to, um, than trying to trust Dio. Also, it looks like this is something we've unlocked now. What was this? Is there proof it wasn't murder? Crew quarters. Is there proof it wasn't murder? Huh. Wait, no, that's not what I wanted, no. Oh, my goodness. I always forget that zoom out is right click and I, kick, and I click return to go back to the previous view. And every single time it just takes me back to the beginning of the game where I have to watch this for a good like 15 seconds before I can access the menu and click on the flowchart. Welcome to my struggle. Okay, so yeah, interesting. We've unlocked a couple of our routes. This one is also, there isn't enough antiviral medication. So we know that there was some in the laboratory, right? Where did we, and then Quark also found a dose. Was it, was that one from the laboratory? I don't remember, but now we can actually progress that timeline. And we can progress this one over here. What happened in this timeline? This is where we chose the blue door. We were in the pressure exchange chamber, okay? And then we chose to ally afterwards. I don't remember anything about it. Crew quarters. Is there proof it wasn't murder? Oh, I think this is with Alice or Luna or something like that. And now that we have the information, the journal talking about Radical Six and the suicidality, maybe that's the proof that it wasn't murder at this point. Possibly. I'm not sure if I want to continue with that or if I want to go back and branch differently with Ally. I think... That's what we'll do. And what was this one? Okay, yeah, so this is where the medicine is. And then on the left-hand side is where the journal comes into play. Yeah, let's let's go back and sh see what happens if we choose ally, just for the sake of continuity. Because that's the timeline I'm more familiar with now. And then we'll deal with a little bit more of the timeline jumping. I think that's fair. All right. Going through the same statements, you know, talking about his character, we're going to choose ally, get ourselves killed at the hands of Dio. Granted, the game might not play out the same way. We've talked about this before, where it's like they ally when you choose betray, but they betray when you choose ally. So we can't guarantee that everybody else's decisions will be the same. There is a chance that Kay actually doesn't betray Alice this time around and choose to betray and get nine points. But at the same time, I, I don't see a world where Dio picks ally here. Clover and I stepped out of the AB room. For several long moments, we just stared at one another. Words weren't necessary. Everything she would have tried to tell me, I could already see in her eyes. Let's go. I turned and headed toward the results screen. Sigma. Sigma. I heard her behind me, her voice barely louder than a whisper. The choice was already made. I stood up straight and kept walking. I mean, if Dio chose Betray, we die right here. And there's not much of a timeline to explore after that, is there? So, K, okay, Alice, Temyoji. They chose Betray again, okay. Ally, ally, use, as is usual. 
and betray. So we die. We die and Kay and Dio escape. How is this going to play out? This is a very short timeline. Very short timeline. Results from round two of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. Minus one. What? Sigma's BP is... Negative. Suddenly all eyes were on me. I felt their weight, but stood my ground. It was the result I had expected. I took a deep breath and closed my eyes. Here's the real question. We know something is off about Sigma, right? He has that sort of white blood that we found in that other timeline. Will this be able to kill him? If he's not a human and instead is a robot, will this poison actually kill him? We're about to find out. I didn't have to wait long. There was a sharp, quick pain in my wrist, barely even noticeable. I couldn't feel anything flowing into my veins, but I knew it was there. First would be the anesthetic soparil. I blinked, and my vision started to blur. When I tried to think, it felt like my mind had been stuffed with cotton. My legs began to wobble, then gave out entirely as I crumpled to the floor. Sigma. 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 Hang on. Hey. Sigma. Get up. Sigma. Oh no. Trying to open my eyelids was like trying to lift sheets of lead. My eyes had lost the ability to focus, but I could make out a blur that had to be Dio in front of the number 9 door. D darn it. You'll keep your promise, darn it. I groaned and with a Herculean effort lifted my head, and then my sluggish body off the floor. Every step was a battle, and whenever I shifted my weight, my muscles threatened to give out again. But somehow I forced myself ahead, a single thought burning in my mind. I would reach Dio. Then, at last, the smudge of color faded into a recognizable person. I threw out my hand in front of him. Give, give it back. Give me the medicine. Give it back. Don't act like it's yours. Aren't we supposed to share everything we find here? I don't care. Just hand me the medicine. What are you talking about? We found the Accelivir. In the laboratory. And Dio stole it. What? You, you mean he has it? Right now? Yeah? So? That smug pose. Oh, I hate Dio so much. I kept my promise. Now, you... I wasn't a fool. I knew the kind of person Dio was. There was a chance he wouldn't give us back the Excelivir. If he didn't, then I'd die with my hands around his throat. I gathered as much of my mind as I could and got ready to attack. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. Not quite what I'd been expecting. Same here. Here. With a shrug, he pulled the vial out of his pocket and tossed it toward me. Tossed it toward the guy who's anesthetized and can hardly stand. I caught it and pulled the tiny glass bottle to my chest, worried I might drop it. The label said, unmistakably, Excelivir. It was the real thing. Clover, take it. I held it out toward her. R right. Of course. She quickly tucked it into her pocket. Good. Now at least Quark will be alright. With that, the last of my strength left me, and I dropped to my knees. Sigma, are you okay? Sigma! I guess this is it.
が9分後にハイメトリンを注入して呼吸筋を麻痺させる First is the soporil, which puts you to sleep. Nine minutes later, the tubo curarine is injected, numbing your respiratory muscles. The only way to avoid things at this point is to get that bracelet off before that tubo curarine is injected. Which we know may actually be possible given Quark's shenanigans and other timelines, right? I guess you could say it'll really take your breath away. Nine minutes. Once the soporil was injected, I had nine minutes until the muscle relaxant followed it. About four minutes had already passed, which left me with five, give or take a little. In five minutes, I would be dead. What could I do in five minutes? How could I save myself? Cut off your arm. Heh. <laughs> I gave a raspy, quiet laugh. Even with death staring me in my face, I seem to be determined to struggle right up until the very end. Okay, Sigma. You can do this. Clinging desperately to what little consciousness I had left, I racked my brain for any possible solutions. Tap into the morphogenetic fields! How could I save myself? How? There had to be something. Every problem, no matter how difficult, has a solution. There's always another option. Hopelessness is a state of mind. I just had to think. Think, think, think. If there was a way out, I'd find it. I wasn't ready to give up on life yet. There had to be an answer. Wow. I did not expect the ending to be avoid death via getting the bracelet off, right? That is definitely not what I expected. I guess if you knew you could get the bracelet off to avoid death via the, the bracelet, the way to keep everybody alive is to go the ally route and then take the hit with your own, you know, bracelet points and, and try to move on from there. The next obstacle, even if Sigma survives this in the next five minutes, is how do you keep Dio and K from exiting through the number nine door, right? That is going to be one, one heck of a timeline. Wow. So, now that we've done that, the question is, which way do we want to go? Like I said, we have two locks that have now been unlocked based on what we found in the laboratory. There's also this entire branch we haven't explored yet. I think for the time being, I would like to go back to this one and see what we can do in this timeline. Ah, uh, but there's really only one main branch left to do, which is pretty crazy, honestly. Do I want to go back to this one? I don't know, guys. Now that we know what information unlocked this, this lock here, it might be nice to go back to that one. And the events of this timeline that we've been on are more akin to what happened when we chose the cyan door. Then if we go all the way back to here and branch things out after the very first AB game. This is where we, we went to the infirmary and then escape. And if we chose ally, we go to the left. But if we choose betray, we get a different timeline altogether. I'm kind of tempted to start that one. Just because then we can start to really unravel all the different endings. Hmm... I wish I could just ask you guys what you think, but I can't do this in real time, unfortunately. What happened in this timeline? We chose ally. You know, I, I'm curious enough to go to this one. I'm really eager to start getting to some of the endings, getting some big picture information. Just because... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've mentioned before the repetitiveness of... Some of the points of this game um, are getting to me a little bit, so I'm eager to explore the endings. Alice! The first thing I saw when I stepped through the door was the blossom of red on her chest. It felt as if I'd walked straight into a brick wall. Well, we've, we've seen all of this before, obviously. We note that there's the scalpel, which means it's likely she killed herself. And I don't remember exactly what happened, but... There it is, the journal. 
Those infected by Radical Six eventually develop a powerful urge to commit suicide. Suddenly, Clover moved. I leapt forward and clamped my hand around her wrist. That's right, that's right. Clover wanted proof that it wasn't a murder. What are you doing? Clover, listen to me. Alice wasn't killed. Nobody murdered her. She, she took her own life. What? No. No, there's no way she'd do that. It's true. She stabbed herself in the heart with the scalpel. Alright, where'd she get the scalpel then? Well, we know it was in the infirmary, right? Um, I did hear someone come into the infirmary right after the AB game ended. Was that before I showed up? Yes. I got up to see who it was, but they were already gone. It could have been Alice. So she could have taken the scalpel then. Yes, I think so. You're lying. This is all a lie. It has to be. It's not. It's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Justin. <laughs> then why did she do it? Why would Alice kill herself? She she probably didn't have a reason. W what? She'd been infected with Radical Six. That's what killed her. But you just said she killed herself. Just tell me the truth. I am. Then prove it. Your 10 seconds ran out a long time ago, so if you don't have any proof, I do. I have proof. There was a journal in the lab, wasn't there, Kay? Show it to me. Interesting. This is so interesting. So now we see Sigma utilizing, leveraging this knowledge from other timelines, but then I wonder if K understood what was said. Probably not. It took Phi, you know, to decipher what was said in the in the journal. But this will be crazy if he's like on page two sixteen. Read it, you know. Uh, journal. It would have been in the safe. Ah, uh, well, Alice would have it then. Phi, can you? I don't feel right touching a dead woman's body. Could you take a look? Sure. <laughs> Where could she fit a journal on her body that it isn't already immediately visible? <laughs> Guys. <laughs> her hands barely shook as she quickly searched through Alice's clothing. It was only seconds before she stopped. Yeah, it's, it's not like it could be anywhere other than, I don't know, like her upper back. <laughs> Slowly and carefully, she drew something out. There it was. The journal. Phi turned to hand it to me, but I shook my head. You read it. It's in Latin. I can't make heads or tails of it. She cocked an eyebrow at me and flipped the small book open. When she looked back up at me, it was with both suspicion and surprise. Yeah, it is Latin. But translating this is impossible. It's full of words I've never heard before. I can barely understand any of this. Page 216. Huh? Turn to page 216. You should be able to read that one. Fai's frown deepened, but she did as I had suggested. I watched her eyes quickly scan the page before looking up at me with renewed suspicion. Yeah, I can read this page. How did you know? Yeah, this has got to be like mind-blowing for Fai right now. No, wait, how did you even know there was a journal in the lab? I just... knew. You... just knew? Come on! Look, just read it, okay? Clover wants to hear what it has to say. Right? Uh, uh, yeah. Right. 
Give me a moment to look it over. After a few moments of whispering to herself in Latin, Phi began to translate, paraphrasing the contents of the journal. Radical 6 reduces the processing speed of the brain by a factor of the root of 1 6. One of the symptoms of Radical 6 infection is an overwhelming urge to commit suicide. Research has shown that it would probably respond to the right sort of antiviral medication, but no one has been able to develop one yet. Nearby towns are filled with the corpses of people who took their own lives. The uninfected have only barely managed to survive and have been sent in underground shelters supervised by the government. Whew. I know you guys just heard that one recently, so... Oh lord, please. Let their future be a bright one. Phi shut the journal with a soft slap. A sickly silence drifted through the room. The newspaper article, the recording, the conversation with Temyoji, and now this journal entry. There was no more hiding from the truth. The pandemic had already happened. <laughs> Poor Clover. Also, that was a nice little review, that they had read that article in the infirmary, and then Temyoji had that conversation about the project, I think with like Mars, and we heard the audio clip in this timeline. All of Clover's rage suddenly dissipated, and she collapsed to the floor, tears pouring down her face. None of us had the heart to say anything, and for several long moments, the only sound of the room was Clover's sobs. What? Um, we've got a problem. <laughs> of course we do, Dio. Who wants to, you know, distract everyone, pull their attention elsewhere? It's almost time for the primary doors to open. <laughs> yeah, only ten minutes left. Sorry, but I'll be taking Alice's bracelet. Fai and I won't be able to open the secondary door without it. So, she was a magenta pair, just like me. Just now noticed that, did you? As he spoke, Dio grabbed the bracelet off the floor and dropped it into his pocket. What color is your bracelet, Luna? I'm a cyan pair. You are part of Clover's pair, then. I love this music. <laughs> that means the two of you will need to come with me. I guess so. Come on now, Clover. We need to go. Alice would want you to survive, wouldn't she? You'll never be able to figure out why all this happened if you stay here. Please. You're right. Alice, I promise I'll find out what happened to you. I'll figure out who Zero really is. I mean, if you'd never been locked up in here, you never would have... This never would have happened. So... So it's like Zero killed you. I... I promise. I'll avenge you. Clover stood up and rubbed her hands roughly over her eyes, smearing tears across her cheeks. Then, with a determined frown, she strode out of the room. Alright, we're out of time. Move, people. You guys head on down to the Floor B warehouse. We'll catch up with you later. Oh, right. Quark's got the yellow bracelet, which makes him your partner, right? Yeah. Can't exactly leave him behind. Without him, we'd end up stuck in the AB room. Uh-huh. Okay, let's go. We'll see the rest of you once we've picked up Quark. Very well, until we meet again. Wow, and so we're able to actually resolve that situation and move forward now. I'm excited to see what happens in this timeline. So we're going to the infirmary, we're going to pick up Quark, and then we head through the next 
chromatic door. Cool. What? What? Are you for real right now? Are you for real right now, game? This episode, guys. This episode, we had that intense AV game. We chose Betray, and Kay ends up betraying Alice and escaping as we try to stifle Dio's plan. And then we say, okay, now we'll try Ally. And then we almost die ourselves and are just barely on death's door when... When we're going to try to save ourselves, we're like, all right, now we've unlocked another timeline, and we're able to defuse an immensely intense situation as Alice has just died, and Clover is convinced somebody's going to murder somebody else, um, or somebody murdered her, and we're able to pull all this, you know, magic <laughs> sorcery to basically tell Fi that there's this journal that only she can read, and she can only read the specific page, and that's why it's super relevant now, and everybody's like, okay, but we have bigger problems to deal with with the chromatic door, and now we have less than 10 minutes until we need to walk through this door. And Quark is suddenly conscious, no longer anesthetized, awake, talking to us. What is going on in this episode? I think, I think I'm going to say we'll find out in the next episode just what in the world is going on with Quark. Why he's awake, why he hasn't killed himself, why he seems relatively okay right now. And how that's going to impact, well, whatever room we explore in, in the next uh chromatic door if quark is okay it's going to be for a couple different reasons right there might be a natural course of the virus where if you keep people anesthetized for a certain amount of time they are i guess are not active and able to kill themselves for long enough that the duration of the virus's activities ends and when they do wake up eventually they no longer have such an impulse they no longer have such a slowing down that they're compelled to commit suicide right that's one option the other option is somebody else cured him and had found such a cure. Or uh, Quark, I don't know. This doesn't. Ha this shouldn't have anything to do with being able to take his bracelet off like in that other timeline. So I'm not really sure what other possibilities there could be. It's also possible he's no longer anesthetized and we just happen to catch him awake and he still wants to kill himself and we're about to try to prevent him from doing so, right? Even though he seems incredibly calm at the moment, he very well may not be and be in the midst of looking for that scalpel he knew was in the infirmary earlier, right? So I don't, I don't know, but I'm really curious to find out and I hope you guys are too. But until the next episode, this has been Night Zero and this mission is complete.